What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 19 of our matplotlib tutorial series. In this part we're going to be talking about subplots. So there's two major ways to create subplots. So we're going to cover both of those uh, hopefully in this tutorial. So uh, if you're following along linearly, save the current code that we have right now. Uh, but otherwise we're going to go ahead and just delete all of this code uh, and we'll restart with a clean slate basically. So I'm going to go control A, delete. So uh, first of all, uh, we're gonna create some random data. So we're gonna use random. So I'm just gonna import random. And then what we're gonna do is import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. We always need that, so we'll continue on using that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna define our figure. Figure is plt.figure. Now what we need is some basic data to start with. So we're gonna define a new function and we're gonna call this function create plots. And then we're gonna have x is equals an empty list, y is equals an empty list. And then we're gonna say for i in range of whatever you want, but we'll do 10. We're gonna say x equals i, y equals random dot rand range. And we'll give this a random range of 10. And then we're going to say x's dot append the x, y's dot append that y. And then we're all done there. And then at the very end, we just return x's and y's. So this will give us some sample data just to kind of work with to get acclimated to this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define some axes. So as we've seen already, we've done something like this, like ax1 equals fig dot add underscore subplot. And we've done something like um, one by one by one. So the way this works is the first number is the height, the second number is the width, and the third number is plot. Now I'm really good at drawing things in paint, so I figure why not draw something in paint to help everybody. So we'll bring up paint here. And the way this works is the following. So we've got a, uh, let's say we've got a figure here. So this is our figure, like the entirety of our graph. And right now we're plotting a one by one by one. So that means the the actual you know chart is like right in here. And in fact, let's make that a, let's make it a different color. So black is the figure, and then blue will be the the subplot. Okay. So that's our current subplot. Really nothing special there. But what if we make this a two, a two by one, and this is plot number one? Well, uh, the way that this will change is now we have a two by one. So we'd have one plot up here and we'd have another plot uh, down here. So this would be a two by one and then this would be plot number one and this would be plot number two. Okay, so uh, that's how subplot two grid works. And uh, another thing that you might do, well, first, actually, let's let's uh, let's plot two examples of this, and then we'll go, we'll kind of make this slightly more complex. So we'll say ax1 equals two by one, and it's plot number one. And then let's go ahead and just take this, copy, paste, and this one will be a two by one, and then number two, and we'll call this axes number two. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to say, uh, we'll say x comma y equals create underscore plots. And then we'll just do ax1 dot plot and then xy. And then let's just copy this right here. Copy, oops, sorry, punch my mic there, paste, and then uh, ax2 plot xy. Okay, so let's save and run that. And in fact, let's bring in style because we got to have style. So from matplotlib import style and style.use and we'll use 538. All right, save and run that. And we'll wait for that to pop up. For some reason it's taking a second. There we go. Oh, we didn't call a plot show. So we're, we've plotted the things, but we still need plt.show. Let's try one more time. There we go. So now we've got our plots. We've got one subplot that's up here and one subplot is down here. Uh, we've got a little bit of overlap going on there, but we'll not worry about that right now. This is a subplot tutorial. So anyway, um, so we've got this plot on the top. This, so this is AX1 up here and this is AX2 down here. So let's close out of this. Cool. Now what we want to do is let's say we wanted to add a third subplot, but this time we want... Um, Maybe we want two subplots on top. So let's say we're trying to do the following. So this would be, you know, this would be the the, the two by one. Uh, this is like, you know, a two by one configuration, right? 
Uh, but what if we wanted to do like this? Like, what if we wanted to have a subplot here, a subplot here, and then one big subplot here? How do we do that? Well, the way that we do this is because you can't say like, okay, well, that's simple, Harrison. We would obviously do a two by two, duh. Well, the problem is when you do a two by two, that would be this is plot number one, this is plot number two, but what, this one doesn't you know, correspond to anything. So instead what you have to do is you have basically two grids. These top two would correspond to a two by two, and the bottom one would be still a two by one, two by one, but this would be a two, one, two. This would be a two by two, but plot number one, and this would be a two by two and plot number two, right? And then like if say you had a two by two, like like just we're not gonna do this, but if you had two more down here, like one there and one here, that would be a you know two by two number three and a two by two number four. Okay? So if you have questions about that, ask them below. But the way that we're gonna get away with this is by these two are a part of a two by two grid, whereas this one is a two or part of a two by one grid. So let's go ahead and, and bring that bring that out. So uh, AX1 is now a 2x2 two two number 1, AX2 is a 2x2 two two number 2, and then we'll copy this, paste, and then AX3 will be a 2x1 but a number 2. So then let's take this these, this information here, paste, and then now it's AX3.plotXY. So now let's save and run that. And sure enough, we've got two graphs on the top and then one graph on the bottom. So that's how you can do some basic subplots. I actually, this is not my chosen uh, way of doing subplots, but uh, this way works just as good as the other way that I'm about to show you. So that's one way that you can add subplots, but now let's talk about subplot to grid. So uh, we'll save this. And um, in fact, probably what I'll do is this would be, I'm just gonna note this as uh, add so oops add subplot syntax and then I'm going to comment all these out and then now what we're going to be talking about is subplot to grid so the way subplot to grid works is the following so you would say um, let's make some space here and scroll down so you would say uh, ax1 with subplot to grid is equal to plt dot subplot to grid and then you specify the entire grid size. So you could kind of do the exact same thing as you've done down here. But what, what's good about subplot to grid is remember before when we had, like say we wanted to do like, hey, this is a two by two. There was no way to say like, this is two by two number one, this is two by two number two, and this is two by two number two to four, right? We couldn't do that. But with subplot to grid, we can, so we don't have to have things having different grid, you know, starting sizes, you know. So, for example, here we're going to say this is subplot to grid. It's a part of a grid that is a six by one, so six tall, one wide. But you could do as many wide as you wanted if you wanted to have multiple. So it's a six by one, and then the next parameter is the starting point. Uh, this one will start at zero zero, and then uh, we'll have. Uh, you have two choices here. You've got row span and column span. So let's say row span. We want this to span um, one row, we'll say. Uh, or actually, let's have it span two rows for now. And then col span will be equal to one. This is really not necessary to add this because we're, we literally only have one column. But if you wanted to, uh, you could have multiple columns and then you would still say how many it spans. So in our case now, let's uh, see how long it takes us to clear this up. Awesome. So now this is subplot to grid stuff. And now what subplot to grid does is here's our little figure. And then, you know, inside it, you've got your subplot grid. So it'd be, you know, something like this, I guess. And then within it, you've got your little divisions. So this would be, we've got six. So this would be uh, one division here. Ah, there we go. And then let's just take this. Copy. So we have two div at the moment. That would be three. This is our four. We've got five divisions. And now we've got six total divisions here. So this is a one, two, three, four, five, six by one 
uh, grid here. So then, uh, so that's our grid, and then our little subplots within the grid, you would say, okay, well, at starting point zero, zero, let's call this one green now, zero, zero, let's see, we have, so it starts, it's a six by one, zero, zero, spans two rows, one column. So what would that look like? Well, that's going to be, um, whoops, that's going to be a subplot that's basically like this, right? And then let's say we had one, now we want another one to be right here. The start point here is going to be uh, two zero, and then it would do, let's say we only span one row, that would be like this, right? Or if we said two rows, it would be like this, or three rows, it would be like this, right? And then so on. So now, pretty paint aside, let's do it. Let's say AX1, we'll just copy AX1 and paste twice, so paste, paste. AX2, AX3, starting point here will be 2, starting point here will be 4. And then now we can save and run that. And then now you've got, you know, 1, 2, and 3. And then moving forward into the way we're going to do stocks, like let's say we don't want them all the same size. Let's make this uh, row span 1, this one will be 4, and this one will be 1. Starting point here would be 1. Starting point here would be five, right? Because this is spanning four. You can have them overlap, but you would not want to do that, <laughs> but it's possible. So then we'll run that. So now we've got a little squished up chart up here, a big primary chart here, and a little squished up chart down here. Uh, as far as the labels are concerned and all this are concerned, don't worry, we're going to get into that. But this is kind of the format we're going to use to plot a stock chart. So up here at the top, you would have like an indicator. This would be your price and this would be another indicator or something like that down at the bottom. So we're gonna kind of use this format moving forward with plotting our stock prices and stuff and the more uh, advanced customization of matplotlib. So anyways, those are your two subplot options. I prefer the second, but it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they can produce pretty much the exact same charts. So it really doesn't matter which one you like. Uh, use whatever you want. We're gonna use subplot to grid for the rest of the series, but Really, subplot to grid is only used right here, so you can change your add subplot if you want and uh, follow along for the rest of the tutorial. So do what you want. Subplot to grid and subplot. Uh, that's it. Questions or comments below. Uh, otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.